Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be exploring the surprising science of dawn light simulation and how its countless benefits can completely transform your mornings. By the end, I'll share my top sunrise alarm clock recommendations based on hours of research and testing, as well as a simple step-by-step -step guide to using them effectively. If you've ever been camping outdoors, you're probably familiar with the feeling of waking up after the sun has risen and the birds are chirping away. You didn't have any work or any responsibilities, so you didn't set an alarm. You simply woke up once the environment and your body decided you should. You also probably recall waking up was easier and you didn't feel as groggy afterwards. This is because in the wild, we naturally experience dawn through our closed eyelids before we wake up. This brings us to one of the most notable benefits of sunrise alarm clocks, and that is reducing sleep inertia. Sleep inertia is that grogginess you feel after waking up, that thing that makes you want to go back to bed. It does this in part by increasing our levels of cortisol before we wake up, which would occur naturally if we were outside. You see, cortisol is one of the hormones that follows a 24-hour rhythm peaking just after we wake up in the morning. This morning rise in cortisol has been termed the cortisol awakening response, or CAR for short. While it is well known that bright light in the morning is capable of significantly increasing this cortisol spike, it is less well known that bright light through the eyelids before waking can also increase cortisol. Now, only a few studies have looked at dawn light's effects on cortisol, the first of which occurred in 2004. This study involved 12 subjects who received either a 30-minute dawn simulation prior to waking or a control alarm clock. What researchers saw was a significant increase in cortisol at 15 and 30 minutes post-waking in the dawn simulation group. It's also worth noting in this study that the arousal scores of the dawn simulation group were much higher. In 2010, another study looked at cortisol, skin temperature, and sleep inertia. This study involved 16 subjects who received 30 minutes of dawn simulation light, followed by 30 minutes of 300 lux light post-waking. The control group in this study simply received 30 minutes of 300 lux light after their audible alarm. The authors in this study, however, were unable to find a difference in cortisol levels between these two groups, which is interesting. Since we know that morning light significantly increases cortisol, this could be due to the bright light in the control group overpowering any significant gain that the dawn simulation group had. What's interesting once again though, is even though both groups received 30 minutes of 300 lux light post waking, the dawn simulation group still saw less sleepiness all the way through their post waking period. Now, one last study in 2014 looked at 18 subjects who received either dawn simulation or a dim control light. This study was designed to measure neurocardiovascular changes in a sudden wake up versus a more gradual wake up, but they also measured cortisol 30 minutes after waking in both groups. What they found was cortisol was much higher in the dawn simulation group once again. The stress response upon waking was also significantly reduced with a much lower heart rate transition as well as improved HRV scores post waking. So while the evidence is lacking overall, there is a little bit pointing towards dawn simulation buffering the cortisol awakening response, which I think is interesting. Let's go over how sunrise alarm clocks can absolutely improve your waking experience. This first study was completed in 2010 and involved 23 subjects split into two experiments. The first experiment split the participants into three groups, 30 minutes of dawn light peaking at 50 lux, 30 minutes of dawn light peaking at 250 lux, and a zero lux control. What the researchers found was that sleep inertia and mood were both significantly improved in both the 50 and 250 lux group, but not the control group. The second experiment was interesting because the participants were allowed to self-select their preferred lux between 20 and 400. The average lux chosen by the participants was around 265 lux, but I believe it varied from around 100 to 400. That might come in handy when you use yours. This next one's kind of cool. Another study completed in 2010 involved over 100 children who spent one week waking up with dawn simulation and one week without. During the dawn wake-up week, children felt more alertness at awakening, got up easier, and felt more alertness during the second lesson of school. 
evening types received more benefit from this as well. A study from 2014 involved eight subjects who self-reported as late chronotypes and experienced large amounts of sleep inertia. In this study, they actually used two sunrise alarm clocks on either side of the participants, peaking at no more than 300 lux each. Alertness, perceived sleep quality, cognitive and athletic performance, as well as reaction time, all improved when using dawn simulation. Another study on 54 adolescents found that just 20 minutes of dawn simulation light was enough to improve cognitive performance even several hours after waking. So sunrise alarm clocks can certainly make our mornings easier, but do they have any impact on the circadian rhythm itself? The human circadian phase averages out to around 24.2 hours. Thus, we require daily signals in the form of light to set our circadian rhythm to a proper 24-hour cycle. Well, it turns out that dawn simulation alone is capable of doing this. The first study we're going to look at is rather large, comparatively speaking, and took place in 2010. It involved over 100 subjects split into five groups, but we're going to look at just two of these groups specifically. Group 1 got 93 minutes of dawn light, peaking at 250 lux, while group 2 got 30 minutes of 10,000 lux light within 10 minutes of waking. The researchers in the study were very surprised to find that the 250 lux dawn simulation light was just as effective at phase shifting these participants as the 10,000 lux light was. This could be due to the phase response curve of light, which is more sensitive in the two hour window prior to waking. A greater amount of bright light exposure is needed as the day progresses and sensitivity declines. Sunrise alarm clocks have also been studied for their ability to reduce the symptoms of winter depression, and it turns out they're quite good at it. One study looking at this was completed in 1994 and involved 19 participants split up into two groups. One group got one week of a 1.5 hour white light dawn simulation peaking at 250 lux, and the other group got one week of a red 1.5 hour dawn light peaking at two lux. So that kind of acted as a placebo control. As it turns out, the bright white dawn had a significantly better effect on reducing depression scores. Now here's a really interesting study from 2001. This involved 95 subjects split into three groups. Bright light therapy at 10,000 lux for 30 minutes, dawn simulation for 90 minutes peaking at 250 lux, and the last group got a red light dawn simulation peaking at just 0.5 lux. Now these three groups were studied for a total of six weeks. Unexpectedly, in this study, dawn simulation was more effective at reducing seasonal affective disorder than both the placebo and the bright light therapy group. Another 2006 study enrolled 99 adults and once again compared bright light therapy to dawn simulation. The bright light therapy group was 10,000 lux for 30 minutes, but this time the dawn simulation was 3.5 hours peaking at 250 lux. This study intervention was three weeks. In this study, they were both effective with the bright light therapy being just slightly more effective than the dawn simulation. One last study I found was from 2015 and involved 40 participants split up into two groups. One group got one week of bright light at 4,300 lux for 30 to 45 minutes after waking. The other group had one week of 30 minute dawn simulation peaking at 100 lux, followed by 15 minutes of sitting closer to the lamp at peaking at 250 lux post waking. Overall, the bright light therapy seemed to be more effective, but they were both effective once again. It was noted that those that preferred the bright light treatment had worse depression and seemed to benefit more from the bright light than the dawn light. Of those that preferred the dawn light, time savings and naturalness were the reported factors. So there's a lot more science that has been done with these, but those are just kind of the ones that I wanted to go over. Hopefully you found that convincing, and if you don't already use a sunrise alarm clock to wake up, you absolutely should. It's been a huge game changer for me, and everyone that I've seen use one loves them. But the question is, which ones should you buy, and how do you use them? Well, as far as which ones to buy, I recommend the Lumi Body Clock Shine 300. It is our top pick from our best sunrise alarm clock video, which I recommend you check out if you wanna learn a little bit more about some of the other recommendations. 
but that's a good overall pick. That's my suggestion. So the way sunrise alarm clocks work is they peak at your alarm time. So if you set a 30 minute sunrise and you wanna wake up at 6 a.m., it's gonna start getting bright at 5.30 and slowly raise up to its peak brightness. Now what's nice about sunrise alarm clocks, if you don't use the audible function, which I don't and I recommend you don't, is you won't always wake up at 6 a.m., right? Sometimes you might wake up at 5.45 and sometimes you might wake up at 6.30. The brilliant thing here is that your body sort of gets to choose when it's ready to wake up, which is what you want. How do you use them? Well, you wanna start at about 250 lux. That seems like a good place to start. The best sunrise alarm clock video, as well as the article for that video, has charts that will allow you to see what lux you're gonna get at what distance and what brightness setting. So you might wanna check that out. From there, you're gonna have to bump it up or down depending on how you react. If you're waking up way too early, you're gonna want to decrease the brightness or increase the gradation of time. So, you know, maybe you want 90 minutes at a lower brightness setting versus 30 minutes at a higher brightness setting, right? It's, it's gonna be a little trial and error. There's no one size fits all for everybody. So if this video has been helpful, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button. And there's an article for this video linked below if you wanna see charts or you wanna see the studies and you wanna read up on this. We also have reviews of a bunch of different sunrise alarm clocks if you wanna check all those out. Uh, it's all down below on the website, on the YouTube channel. So check it out. All right, see you guys.